Hello, today we're looking at another Batman miniature game video. In the past few weeks we've been looking at the turn pre-game scenarios and putting some crews together. Today we're looking at something that adds a little bit of extra flavour to the game. Today we're looking at the Speed Force, which is a completely different section within the overall turn. Previously when we've looked at the turn, We've done the take the lead, gone to raising the plan, executing the plan, and then the recount. Well, with if you have a Barry Allen or uh, an Eobard Thorn, which are the two main speedsters, then we have an extra phase called the speed phase. And it goes here. So once we've taken the lead, pulled out whose tokens in what followed immediately by the speed phase which allows the models to move and act before the raising of the plan and obviously the execution so let's look at the anatomy of a speedster this card is as you can see Barry Allen Lash TV who's a sidekick for law and order, for uh, the forces of good, and he comes in at 100 reputation. As speedsters go for Barry Allen, his speedster level, if I can get it to focus, is 5, and what that allows people to do is that at the beginning of the speed force phase, they draw what are called speed force tokens. There are a maximum of 10 within a pool and then the speedster draws a number of tokens equal to their speedster level. The Barry Allen, comic Barry Allen has a speedster of six and the Flash Ezra Miller from the DC Universe, movie universe also has a speedster six. So as if you've got someone with a speedster five and a speedster six and they're drawing from the same pool of 10 then they're vying for the same commodity which adds that little bit of uh, extra uh, planning and uh, resource management unlike action counters speed force counters do carry over from round to round so if you have any speed force counters left over you can pile them up from the next round and this allows you to do more actions or to take more, uh, do more abilities. The TV Flash has a special ability that with three speed force counters allows him to hurl some lightning bolts. And there's this other number at the end, a 6 plus. And every time he does that, he rolls a D6 and on a 6 plus an event occurs which could be anything from him suddenly disappearing off the board to a rival Flash appearing and trying to kill him or absorb all of his speed force. So the other points of speed force that are on these traits is that you've obviously got the speedster which has a speedster of X and that's the number of tokens that get drawn. Speed force master which is something that only Barry Allen has at this stage and that allows him to use some of his speed force tokens as action counters for when he's using the raising the plan so whatever he's not spending if he wishes he could throw in some additional counters in here so where the normal raise the plan he has seven will so he gets to distribute seven points and he's got two speed force points left over he can put a total of a nine across. Speedsters have a limitation in that if they run out of action counters then they are what's called fatigued where they lose uh, some movement and they lose some uh, defense. Being a speedster also means that you can move everywhere, everywhere. you can move up and down across buildings. Uh, the dif most difficult terrain types are ignored but more importantly in hand-to-hand -hand combat you cannot be blocked 
which is quite useful, unless your opponent is also a speedster. Being a speedster or having speedster trait also adds two to your base movement. So when Barry Allen does get to use his normal movement with the raise the plan and execute the plan, his movement would traditionally be four, being a medium model. Now it goes to six. Many speedsters also have what's called the fast trait, which adds an additional two. So now his six goes to eight during the normal movement before he spends any movement counters. So if we look at some of the others, and with Eobard Thorn, you've got his phase strike where you see him constantly phasing his hand through people's chests. As you can see, he doesn't play well with others. Got lots of rivals. Henchman, oh, sorry for a free agent. Ezra Miller, Barry Allen, free agent. And a sidekick for the Flash comic. So if we're looking at the speed phase here, part A is drain speed force. That's when the tokens get taken out of the speed force for the speed force pool. And if you've got multiple speedsters, you're looking at doing that in the uh, take the lead. So if the uh, side A, side B, side A, side B, until all speedsters have drained their speed force, from the, the pool and then part B spend the fee speed force points again in take the lead order so alternating this is how they can be spent muscle growth adding one to damage fast combos you can only use one at a time and you can't use the same one twice so you'll see here speed super speed level one super speed level two so yes you can spend three points for super speed level one and move the model immediately four and then move the model immediately eight and a possible paradox no or spend the three points for three Go for the 15 with a 5 plus. So with a paradox, the this number here is the chance on a six-sided dice that the speed force event occurs, bringing on the black flash, which then hunts down the speedsters on the table. And the speeds and the black flash also drains speed force counters from everyone or from selected super speeders. Well, it creates a paradox event. We'll have a look at those in a few moments, but that's one of the options. Rapid disarm. Hyper, hyper fast. And so on. Classic one for six is hyperspeed, where the speedster can be taken from its... from removed and then placed anywhere on the board immediately for a total of six points. So, which means that the Barry Allen TV flash can't do that on the first turn as he needs to generate enough speed counters to be able to do six points. So these are the paradox effects. So if the paradox option comes up, this is the dreaded black flash. 
But generally, if a paradox occurs, worst case scenario, remove model as a casualty. Other than that, generally losing actions and having stun effects and so on. So with the paradox, when that gets, uh, when that arrives, it means that the power didn't work, but the effect of the paradox comes into play. So sometimes it can be what happened, place your, your opponent places the model anywhere in the gaming area. So what I've just done is created a very brief scenario. We've got Flash TV against an equal number of like-minded opponents, sort of. There you go. 100, that's roughly 100 points of uh, crew, which could represent a uh, prison breakout uh, you know, from Black Gate or Iron Heights or whatever they're calling it over in, uh, in Flashland. Take the lead counters, the dark ones are for the bad guys, the light ones for the flash. There's our flash. Scenario rolled up quickly. The bad guy opponent, the, the opponent's objective markers are here. Because I've just used 100 points, I've just left it with two markers and two sewers and two or everything else just to keep it light we got and yeah, maybe you can see that there you go riddle marker riddle marker it's a bad signal but in this instance it'll be the flash signal and as you can see These sorts of things, uh, sewers and so on. It's all laid out. And I'm over here. Okay, so this is where the rough idea of the game is put together. And we can start. The first thing we're going to do is look at take the lead. Shuffle them up a bit, make sure I'm not cheating myself. Barry. Taking the lead, now we go straight into speed force phase. He draws five speed force tokens. He speeds to five and he's going to spend three the 12 and the eight in order to put himself just over there Speed force done. Now we get to raising the plan. We'll be back in a moment. So this is how the flash worked out his points. And he can still use the two speed force counters, which may not be necessary.
and the flash goes first. So the flash is 13 inches away from the riddle marker. So he's needing to use his normal four, plus his two from speed force, plus his two from being fast, and then two action counters to make it here. So I have his four movement. He's used them to get there. He's going to spend another one to manipulate. Hopefully get some VPs. And then that leaves him one left. So at the end of the round, moved around there, moved up to there. High security henchman made it to the sewer, backing high security henchman up. Barry's still stuck there. He got two victory points for the riddle marker, which is good because this thing not turned on produces victory points for the opponent. Now we do it again. Barry took the lead again. Now he's got seven speed force points, three of which he's spending to move 12. And that puts him within four inches of the high security henchman, where he's gonna spend another three to have a shot there. So he's having a go at high security henchman. He's gonna have an attack. First, the paradox roll. So he doesn't cause a paradox. Okay, so rolling the dice for the attack, it's an automatic hit. So it just has a three plus strength for one blood and two stun. White die is strength, collateral damage. Red is collateral. Okay. And high security henchman takes damage. One blood, two stun. Meaning now, one action counter less. Now we raise the plane. So this is Barry. He's got one speed force counter left after the last adventure. these guys and over here this is where Barry got to before little marker there Barry goes first and Go for VPs. Just a standard movement, well within his uh, normal range, without using any movement counters. Takes that, manipulates it. Next up. 
prisoners. So Gustav Gustafsson moves up to here within range of Barry. Because he's moved, he has three shots with a five plus. Hitting once. Barry has four dodges. Fails to dodge. And takes the damage. Prisoner number four seven nine zero five. So we're to move up to here with his movement already pre measured and within range to take three shots with Barry with his automatic gun hitting on fives. Barry spends another dodge, this time making it. This one, move up to about here, having up to eight inches of movement with the movement counter spend. No ranged attacks. High security henchman, BAMF. Teleports to up here. VPs at this stage, four to two. So for turn three, it's time for the prisoners to have their shot. Now it's speed force. So the flash draws another five speed force tokens, which gives him a total of six this round. So the first thing he's going to do with them is send a bolt down to our prisoner there. And he's also going to spend another token for the fast combo, meaning he gets to have two attacks for every action counter that he spends. That leaves two speed force points in his pool. So this is for his blast, which hits automatically and damages Tyrone for three tokens for a blood and two stun. Which affects what he does next. Zap! Alright, now we raise the plane. Let's get it on. Raise the plane. The end of the last turn, I did do a check on High Security Henchman. He had an extra special counter to try and remove some damage. Nothing came off. That's the damage that Tyrone just got then. And this is the plan that Barry's doing. He's using up all of his speed force tokens. He's moved the two that were spare across. So as you can see, it's nine across rather than seven. Four into movement, expecting some shooting to happen, some attacks because he's loaded up his attacks and defense. 
Now also remember if he runs out of tokens, he loses a point of movement and he loses some defense. So he can't use up all of his tokens. Shooty, 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 stabby, stabby. Well, punch, punch. And I just realized Tyrone has one counter less. So there you go. Alright. To the battle. Gustav Gustafsson's taking a shot, not moving, and sending five bullets to Barry. Five plus. Three hit. Barry gets some dodges. He doesn't want to use up all of them just yet. So he's going to do two. Bales one. Now it's damage. And one damages. So Barry decides to pass, but he puts, um, having taken two counters, he's now lost one out of his pool. Grotty is up next, moves his full movement, spends his special counter, and gets four shots against Barry, hitting on fives. Hitting twice. Barry decides to dodge once. Makes it. So he's got one movement counter left in his pool. Now for damage. And yes, he takes damage. This one is exactly four inches away from Barry, or Tyrone. Taking twice, getting plus one to hit because of this special rule. So he's hitting on fours, wounding on fours. And misses. Now it's Barry's turn. So to recap, it's before Barry's shot. He's now taken four tokens of damage. So that's what he's down to. And it's his turn. <laughs> what are you going to do? Moving, whoops, moving there. And allocate his attacks accordingly. He's got three action counters for attack. For hand to hand combat. So I'm devoting one there and two to Tyrone. Unless someone has anything else, that's pretty much how it's, I imagine it's laid out. Because he gets two attacks per counter, he gets two shots against Tyrone. Hitting on threes. Hitting 
wants because he's a speedster, his attacks can't be blocked and he's wounding on fours which doesn't remembering that white is the wound and red is the collateral onto Grotty Grotty, Grotty Grotty, Grotty Threes needed. Fours. And there we go. Boom. Knocked down as well. And an extra one. So he takes two wounds because the Collateral dice, match, knock down, because it's a crit, because the six, which is the extra damage, and knock down because they match. All right, that's the flash. High security henchman. We'll just end up moving around over here, or over here. And that's everyone done. So I've already just moved ahead a little bit and the black gates pulled out to take the lead. So the next is speed phase. So for two points, well first of all Barry draws out five. And for two points removes a marker. For one point goes for the double attacks and then for one point he goes for plus one on his strength. Now he'll be wounding on threes. And that leaves one token left over, which is going to be used for the action counters. Everyone else has already done their plan the phase, planning phase, just to jump ahead. So you can see the recount from last time allowed for a few of them to get back a stun. And this time Barry's hoping to pick up some of that. He hasn't had a lot of luck in that. So that's how he's moving forward with the one extra from here from Speed Force. Because he's allowed to use up to two Speed Force tokens to for action counters. That gets him back to seven. That would be at six. Yep. I can count. And Black gate go first. So what we've got here is the black gate going first. Tyrone's making his shots. So Carlo Grotti is currently knocked down. So doesn't count as the uh, providing a negative one to Barry's defense. Carlo's having a shot, so he's hitting on fours, wounding on fours. Two attacks, both hit. Barry's deciding to dodge, needing threes, or block, needing threes. Does one. Tyrone needing to wound on fours, doing two damage. Hits. So Barry takes one action counter off. And it's his turn next. So he's doing what he did before. Two against, one action counter against Tyrone, and two against Carlo. Carlo's knocked down, so he's got an easier chance to hit Carlo this time around. 
Remember Barry's rolling two dice for every action counter and wounds on threes. Misses against Tyrone. Hits with all of them against Carlo. Needing threes. And he's still knocked down. Not that it matters. Takes one damage. Now we're back to Blackgate. Your staff moved here. This is as far as his movement will allow. Next round he can pick up the loot. Start collecting some additional VPs. High security henchman staying where he is. Carlo lost a counter for having two damage and lost, spent a counter to stand up, meaning he's got one attack against Barry, who's now outnumbered, and hitting him on fours, wounding him on fives. And misses. So now it's anybody's game. For round five, it's Barry's turn. He managed to pull the, take the lead. So he draws out five counters, which is for his speed force. And he's going to use one to move four inches, then three for his special attack against Tyrone. And that last counter that he has, he's going to end up using for his action when that happens. So speed force happens first. Barry moves four. Then Fires. First, we do a uh, paradox six, which is not going to happen today. It automatically hits three plus for damage. If he hits or if he wounds Tyrone, then that's enough counters to knock Tyrone out. Fortunately, where the Barry is going. Not happening today. So now we go to planning phase. Using his counters. Barry's up. Okay, so this is how the counters are laid out for everyone. Poor Barry, one wound off from being knocked out. Fragility, being a lone speedster. Engages, Tyrone, three hand-to-hand -hand attacks. Hitting on threes. Just the one. Can't be blocked. Winding on four. Nope. So as much as we'd love to play out the rest of the rounds and everything else, it really looks like Barry's in a bit of trouble. Not being able to uh, knock out a couple of guys, or activate the bat signal. 
the moment it's four all on the victory points at the end of this round. That generates another point for Blackgate. Barry's not looking like he's uh, taking people out. So the TV flash specifically, but Barry Allen, but the flash in general, excellent for collecting victory points on markers, on objectives, getting around the board as quickly as possible, but very easy to be to succumb to a tar pit, such as a couple of characters that just hold them down. If the Batman had been on here, even the 100 point Batman, he probably would have taken all of these guys out without much fuss. Or made a good show of it anyway. So that's about it for the Speed Force section. We've just added the new phase. Hopefully haven't gone anti Barry. He does try. And this is the uh, season one flash. These guys are pretty, these guys are bruisers. Loaded up against guns, and firearms, heavy weapons. Speedsters do take a lot of damage and when they start losing counters, that's not a good look. So they're a bit fragile, but they're good points earners. And since most of the speedsters, well, the two spe the primary speedsters, being Reverse Flash, Zoom, Earbud, Thorn, and Barry Allen, Flash, 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 depending on which Flash, the scientific rule adds an extra victory point when you KO that model. So, pick and choose when they get into battle. Hopefully this has helped a little bit tried to mix it up with the uh, the type of speed force and try to really make it clear how it works and next time I think it's time for a little bit of hocus pocus but right now we're just signing off and saying thank you very much to the people that are uh, helping out and all the viewers hope you're enjoying if you have any questions about what you want to see please feel free if I've got the Kit, happy to go through it. All right, thank you, and good day.